no plans, no plans at all Evil man's always transcending Fight her like sheep, swallow everything Always simple tins or pretending We got no plans This is an exclusive Moment of Clarity interview from LeeCamp.net Today I got to speak with one of my heroes, Andy Bicklebaum from the Yes Men Wikipedia describes the Yes Men as a culture jamming duo They've done such pranks as impersonating a Dow chemical spokesperson live on BBC News and announcing Dow would finally pay the victims of the Bhopal chemical spill who had their land exploited and their lives destroyed. They've also impersonated everyone from ExxonMobil spokespeople to the Chamber of Commerce. I worked with Andy on a project we're doing about tax havens in the Cayman Islands. I'll be down there next week reporting on it. If you want to hear my full unedited interview with Andy, then listen to the Moment of Clarity podcast for free on iTunes, Stitcher, or LeeCamp.net. Also, forgive the, uh, the beeping that's going on during some of the interviews. There was either sidewalk construction going on outside, or it might have also been the CIA doing sidewalk construction. Do, do the Yes Men have a mission statement? And if so, what is it? Because I saw your booklet in there said, uh, Infiltrating Capitalism. Oh, yeah, I guess that is what we do. Um, but we do it for the purpose, well, whatever we do, we do in order basically to give journalists an excuse to write about or talk about important stuff. So, you know, it's not enough that something is really important, like a bunch of people dying or dead, or, you know, because of some corporation's badness. You, you have to make it funny as well. Like, journalists can't just choose to write about something because it's important. At least not in right. this country. They haven't done that in years. No, no. And it's, you know, they, they have editors to answer to, and their editors have people to sell to, and, you know, they have advertisers and all this. But one thing that seems to work pretty well for getting the, for giving journalists the excuse to write about stuff is making it funny. So if you can do that, if you can make it really funny and weird and unexpected and newsy, then they'll write about it. So everything that we've done has that in mind. Right. Mm. And that's, that's a great promotion for my stuff, so thank you. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> Comedy. Comedy yeah. changes the world. Yes. Um, yeah, it does. It, it does. And there's some really great people who will say that to you if you want more endorsements. There's, um, you know, Ivan Marovich, for example, has a whole, um, well, the, you know, the Otpor movement in Serbia? I they, don't. Well, they overthrew a dictator. They did some really big things, and they were a youth movement. When people ask me this, I say it's because it, it cuts through the all the... We, we receive... The average person receives more information than like ever before. Like They're just pummeled by it. I call it bloggeria, spraying them in the mm -hmm. face. And it's... It, it, is it that comedy is able to cut through that and, and make it a little different and make it catchy and make it stick with their minds? And I guess also you're saying that the mainstream media is willing to cover it. Yeah, no, I think there's, there's a bunch of reasons. Like, it, the reason it works for people generally, I think, is, yeah, because it... It cuts through all that. It also it like even if you're hearing all the time about something, you're registering it a certain way each time. If you start laughing about something about it, it generally will freak out your brain. Your your brain likes to laugh, but it also confuses it. So when you're laughing, you're, there's this one part of the brain that opens up. It's like shaped like a little vulva in a way, and it opens up, and stuff can come in that didn't usually come in, and Right. That's an amazing process. So, so you're trying to come in people's brains. Yes. Yeah, got it, it. It enables you to come in people's brains. And once you're in there, you can produce amazing things. A lot of your stunts and some of the ones that first drew me to you guys are, were, were you know, grand, very grand things. Like the, the, uh, the Dow stunt uh, with, the, with the Bhopal chemical spill and the GE stunt uh, more recently was uh, amazing. And uh, these, are, these are very grand <laughs> actions. Yeah, is there like the GE thing? Yeah. For example, you know, journalists were talking a lot about the fact that GE hadn't paid its taxes and a lot of others. Right. And and uh, we actually not we U.S. Uncut saw an opportunity in that to kind of um, make more awareness of that using humor. And so that that's where that came from. It was yeah. a perfect example. Yeah, and it, and it was amazing. Um, and I'm wondering, like, do you feel people can do this on a smaller level? Is it, is it possible to do that? And I guess this is part of what Yes Men Labs has to do with, like, mm -hmm. it's, uh, doing it on a smaller level and in their communities, is, is that possible or is it kind well, of... yeah. I mean, the GE thing was actually a very small action and it was very easy. Um, I mean, relatively easy. It took like three or four days of, of work 
um, with you know a couple of people from US on cut who you know right and us and we just kind of like you know together wrote a press release sent it to some journalists you know set up a, a fake website and it was done I mean it was not a grand scale thing it was mm -hmm. very quick and easy um, and there's all kinds of stuff that people can do to make journalists laugh um, there's all kinds of you know it takes it takes energy it takes a lot of energy but if you're on the roll with a great joke you know you know I mean you, you have to get that joke across it it like becomes this weird mission and yes yeah. it's, and it's fun in a way right yeah and and I've just been working with you on this Cayman Islands trip we're doing and uh, they say 10,000 hours of practice makes people an expert. And you seem to be an expert. <laughs> like, like, sitting down with you is like, you're, you've got 12 pages open and you've instantly infiltrated the entire Cayman government and figured out everything about them. Like, how, do you, how does one train for this? Did you, as like an eight-year-old, were you like working on this and now you put in your 10,000 hours and now you're... No, I mean, I've done it a few times, so I know the, you know okay, you have to start with a bunch of notes and you have to kind of figure out what if those notes are any good and then you have to figure out what's doable and then you have to have a way of doing it. Right. So th there are these things, whatever, but it's not rocket science and you can kind of, it's just having energy for it. It's mm -hmm. just wanting to do it and then you figure it out. It's not complicated. So you just want to do it. You end up thinking about, you know, what, what's funny here. Um, kind of figuring out all the different angles at once and trying, you know, making plans to do a million things and then being ready to cut it down to three or one. Right. You know, right. that's the main trick. Right. I, like, no, I have no training for it at all. I'm just like, I've, I've, I stumbled into it totally by accident in 1996. And ever since then, you know. How, did you, how did you stumble into it? I was. I was um, working at a video game company, and um, my boyfriend had just left me, and so I was bummed. And I was in charge of the little people running around the game, and they wouldn't give me time off to deal with my broken heart situation. So I decided to make all the little people in the game into guys in swimsuits who would kiss each other madly in the middle of the game. And I made it, you know, because programming isn't very complicated to hide things. When, when you're programming, it isn't hard to hide things. So I hid it and made it appear only once in a while. And they shipped the game, 80,000 copies to store shelves. Then it was revealed. It was discovered by my boss, actually, the morning after it shipped. And wow, they, they, pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quick. I, I didn't hide it very well. I wasn't that great a programmer. I mean, you got caught with the video games and fired, but... Uh like, do you ever worry about what could what could happen to you, or, or, or what could be the results of, of doing some of these stunts? I mean, I, I know that, like in the Stratford emails, you've got massive uh, corporations and the richest Americans uh, worried about what you guys are doing and kind of keeping tabs on you. And, and does that, <laughs> does that is that just is that just flattering? Or? <laughs> yeah, that's just flattering. Um, yeah, they they were doing very bad research about this. They were basically doing Google searches and charging. Who knows what they were charging? But this this company Stratfor was, um, you know, they were caught with like like five million of their emails were exposed, and they were found to be doing all kinds of spy services for all kinds of corporations, among them Dow Chemical, and they were researching us for Dow Chemical, paid by Dow Chemical. What that research consisted of was Google searches on our whereabouts, and um, and, and you know, charging incredible amounts of money. Incredible amounts of money. So yeah, it's not it's not frightening. Um, I mean, the thing about being a clown is it's really, you, your opponents have no choice. They, they can't do anything about it. They, they, you know, if they, if they react in an unhumorous way, it just looks really stupid. Right. And everybody laughs at them a lot more. Um, if they just, you know, say nothing, which is what they almost always do in our case. They, they just try to say nothing. Sometimes we have to say something for them, against us, you know, but they, they like, there's nothing to be afraid of in this kind of thing. Yeah. Because if they do anything, they look really, really And it stupid. just makes it a bigger story. Much yeah. bigger. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys working on now? We are working on... Well, you mentioned the Yes Lab. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing the Yes Lab at NYU. If you're in New York, you can stop by the Yes Lab. Uh, go to yeslab.org slash NYU. And um, we kind of work with activist groups. We've got four activist groups on board this semester, and we're working with them. 
uh, and students, NYU students, as well as community members, whoever, to craft actions like the ones we do around mm -hmm. their issues. Um, so that's the main thing. We're also working on a movie called The Yes Men Are Revolting, uh, which we are. Um, and it's you can you can read about it at I think it's facebook.com slash the yes men are revolting. The point of this movie is to, to say how totally fun it is and uh, rewarding it is to be part of the movement, however you know how, whatever, yeah. whatever way you know how, you know if it's by being funny, if yeah. it's um, you know doing stupid stupid shit like we do, um, if it's you know whatever. Um, there's there's a million different ways to, to participate. And I think that I think fun. that those things add up. It's like what you do, what I do, what the Banksy does. It's it's like all kinds of ads up to, to raise awareness and realize people don't have to behave inside this little box and, and go along with the standard operating procedure for uh, how uh, the, the you know the corporates are going to rule our lives. And yeah, no, it's it's one part of the puzzle. You got a lot of people like going out on the streets and doing civil disobedience actions, and that's a critical part of the puzzle. You I also, saw you at Occupy a lot. Yeah, Occupy, and and you know that there's giant uh, civil disobedience actions planned in the next few months around money and politics, as well as continuing ones around climate change and the Keystone Pipeline kind of issue. Um, but then you also have people doing like serious scientific work, like doctors researching cancer rates and you know making that public. We were just up in the tar sands, yeah. and you know suddenly the tar sands became a health issue, a local health issue, because this one doctor there just started noticing cancer rates, and he made it public, kind of by accident, and it became this giant story. Um, and he's become this fighter against the tar sands in that way. Um, where you know his tool is his, his his research and his experience with sick people. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing, wh whatever field you're in, um, you can find a way to, to fight as as you want to. You know, as as satisfies you and as you're capable of doing. All right. Well, I think there's a lot. I, to I think that. I think we've covered everything. I think we fixed the world pretty much. If we did. Yeah. 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 I think so too. Plans, no plans at all. Evil man's always transcending. Fight her like sheep, swallow everything. Always simple tins or pretend.